I want to talk about the game Fortnite. And I believe there is a wicked spirit behind the game. That's why I've gotten so much resistance from people and even Christians when I speak against the game. They say the Bible doesn't say Fortnite is a sin. So you can't just come out and say the Bible is against the game Fortnite. And obviously the Bible doesn't come out and say the words Fortnite is sinful. You shouldn't play it. But the stuff in the game is called sinful by the Bible. And you shouldn't limit the Bible that way. You shouldn't just say, well, the Bible doesn't say anything about it. The Bible says something about everything. Just because it doesn't say the name of the game or the movie or the TV show or whatever other entertainment that you're enjoying, that doesn't mean the Bible doesn't tell us if something is wrong or if it's right. And I'm going to show you why I believe that Fortnite is wrong and it's of the devil. And for those who don't know what Fortnite is, it's a third-person shooter video game made by Epic Games. And it's become so popular and so addictive that parents are having to send their kids to rehab just because they're playing it so much. Uh, Christian men and women are even addicted to the game. And this game has messed up families and marriages so why is your Fortnite addiction wrong? Why is the game itself wrong? I don't want to make it seem like this is the only game I'm against. I'm against pretty much all video games. Most games are wicked, but this seems to be the most popular one right now, and that's the one I'm going to look at. Sure, if there is a game that has nothing sinful in it, if you can find one, and you're not spending insane amounts of time on the game and making it an idol, then it wouldn't be wrong. But... Pretty much 99% of people, what are they doing with a video game? They're playing video games that are sinful. They're playing video games outrageous amounts of time, making it an idol. So that's why I'm against video games for the most part. I'm not saying that it's not possible that it wouldn't be a sin. But for the most part, people are using them that way. The first thing I want to mention about the game is how the developers of the game designed it to make the gamers covet. And what is, what does it mean to be full of covetousness if you covet something? The definition is to desire inordinately, inordinately, to desire that which it is unlawful to obtain or possess in a bad sense. And that's exactly what's going on with the Fortnite game. And the Lord Jesus Christ warns us about covetousness. He says in Luke chapter 12 and verse 15, it says, And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. And I did some Google searches on the game and how much the game makes every month and every year, and I found this very interesting quote about the game. It says, It costs over $450 to buy every Fortnite Season 5 skin. And that's just the Season 5 skins. How is Fortnite a free game pulling in over $300 million a month from its players? That would be the non-stop addition of new cosmetic items, the most attractive of which are skins that offer no in-game benefits, but are coveted all the same. End quote. That's exactly what it said. It actually used the word covet. I didn't add that in. So they're pulling in $300 million a month from players who are just buying these silly little skins. Uh, the Fortnite skins are like little characters or costumes that you can buy. They have no in-game benefits other than making the player that you're playing as in the game look different. Just by looking at the skins... Looking at the skins you can buy on this game, it should alert any Christian. And I don't even see why it's debatable about whether or not this game is a sin or not a sin to play it. The skins on the game prove that the designers of this game are evil in their mind. Uh, the Bible talks about those who are filled with unrighteousness and goes on to mention inventors of evil things. And that's exactly what the Fortnite creators are. They don't care about the souls of men. They don't care about your kid. They have the love of money, and the love of money is the root of all evil, as Paul told Timothy. They invented something wicked 
when they made Fortnite, it's completely of the devil. And it is just another tool of the devil that will keep people away from God. But these skins that your kids are spending your money on are demonic. Let's look at a few. Like the skin Raven. Do you know what a raven is a picture of in the Bible? An unclean spirit. And what does this character Raven look like on Fortnite? He looks like an unclean spirit. That's obvious. Uh, then you have characters like Flytrap and Ragnarok. They look like the devil or devils. If you were to see either one of those, you'd say, well, that's the devil. Uh, this game is the appearance of evil. If an unbeliever walks in and sees you playing with these skins as your character, he's going to think you're into some wicked stuff, and you are, whether you know it or not. And you have all these Christians that attacked me about speaking against this game, saying I can't, I shouldn't speak against Fortnite, just the individual game Fortnite. I shouldn't just pick on that one game. And it's almost like maybe they're playing it behind closed doors and they're feeling a little conviction for their sin. But how could any professing Christian look you in the eye and say that this stuff isn't sinful? 1 Thessalonians 5.22 says, Abstain from all appearance of evil. If the pastor of your church walked in and seen you playing with Flytrap or Raven or any of these other wicked looking skins, wouldn't he think you're playing some demonic video game? Um, and think about this. If the Lord Jesus Christ walked in your room, would you want him to see you playing such filth? Uh, the developers of this game knew that kids would covet these skins and beg and plead with their parents to use their credit card to get each new skin that comes out. And they come out with new ones every so often to keep you wanting more and more. One kid even stole his father's credit card and bought $700 worth of stuff on the game. And there's even certain accounts on the game that are worth $2,000, $3,000 because people have bought so many skins, limited editions, and things like that. What about the wicked character, or skin, Skull Trooper and Ghoul Trooper? Notice how all these characters remind you of something. They remind you of death. That's because Satan loves death. He has the power of death. But Jesus Christ lives. He conquered death, hell, and the grave. And that is why when we get born again, when we get saved, we pass from death unto life. Death is the opposite of God. Uh, when Jesus Christ was around, nobody died. And when he was around, nobody stayed dead. He's going to come back in a rapture. The dead in Christ are going to rise first. Because of him, we conquered death, hell, and the grave. The Christian is not associated with death. But this game is associated with death. This game seems to revolve around death. You're running from it, or you're trying to bring it on to someone else. You're running from being killed, or you're trying to kill someone else. While you're dressed up in these wicked skins. They have a character named Leviathan in Job 41. And it describes the devil calling him the Leviathan in Job chapter 41 because he's king over all the children of pride. Funny they named him that. And it's funny he has an X on his helmet there. A lot of these skins look like witches and the clothes on the women look like the clothes any average hoe or street walker you would see on the street. There is a character or skin named Cloaked Shadow. Just a demonic looking creature with horns and wings. And it describes a, the female devils in Zechariah chapter 5. They're winged creatures. And it says, it, it describes them as wicked. What about the character or skin Omen, who's also devilish looking? The skin Ravage looks wicked and devilish. Cloaked Star, Hollow Head, who has a jackal in him for a head, just looks evil. What about Night Night, an evil looking clown? The skin plague looks demonic, scourge. How can you have pure thoughts when you are walking around killing people on a game in these demonic looking outfits? What about Ruckus? And you'll also notice a lot of half robot, half human skins or characters in this game. 
getting people more used to the transhumanism movement. The iron mixed with miry clay, as Daniel talks about. And you'll also notice a lot of half-animal, half-man skins, which implies bestiality. And those devilish-looking creatures that come out of the bottomless pit in Revelation chapter 9 have faces like men and hair like women, but they're locusts. You know, those demonic creatures described in the Bible, that's what these characters look like on this game. What about the skin patch patroller? Now, you Christians who think I'm just being self-righteous and a Pharisee and stuff, you can't sit here and tell me that God is okay with the wicked-looking stuff in this game simply because it's just a game. A preacher told me it's a waste of God's time to preach against a single video game. So let me get this straight. It's a waste of time to preach against a wicked game that 200 million souls played in 2018? I don't think so. This seems to be affecting a lot of people, a lot of families. And as a watchman, you need to preach against what's popular. Not just because it's popular, but because it's a sin. And I know that just because something's popular doesn't make it sinful. But you have to admit, 99% of the time if something's popular in the world, it's not popular with God. I had someone tell me that. you can't. They said, you can't just say it's sinful because it's popular. Well, of course not. Fortnite's not sinful because it's popular. It's sinful because of what's in the game. And I was amazed at all the Christians and preachers that were against me for speaking out against this game. And that shows that they're sticking up for the world over a Christian who's trying to defend God and trying to help other people. And that's just twisted. Whose side are they on? I mean, if I'm trying to defend God, I'm trying to defend the Bible against a game, and they're choosing the game over what I'm saying, whose side are they on anyway? And Proverbs 27, 20 says, Hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of man are never satisfied. People's eyes are never satisfied. The game developers, those behind Fortnite, they knew this, and that is how they make hundreds of millions every month. The game's already made two billion. Just this year, I heard. Uh, people aren't comfortable in their own skin. And that's why they love video games. They escape life through video games. You can be anything you want on a video game. And you don't have to worry about real life consequences. You can fornicate. You can kill. You can do any sin imaginable in video games today. It's all just, just wickedness on these video games. And it's all just moving images. Notice over and over again in the Bible how God is speaking against images. Notice the devilish looking character Krampus who looks like the devil or similar to the Baphomet with the hooves and the tongue and even in one picture it looks like he's doing the as above so below as he's doing one of their dances on the game but put him next to the picture of Baphomet and you know a lot of the old timers used to call the devil old split foot so a lot of these characters on this game are just representations of the devil or devils not only do people covet the skins on Fortnite but also the dances. It's just bizarre what you can buy on this game and people are actually buying it. But these dances on the game are called emotes. And you can actually purchase these dances with hard-earned money that most likely your parents earned. And I guess these dances, I've never actually played the game, but I'm by looking at YouTube videos, I'm guessing the dances are something that people do after they get a kill. I guess it's like a victory dance. Like the dance Praise the Tomato. And notice it says splatter unto thee. I wonder who they're taking a shot at there. Uh, do a study in the Bible on dancing. And you'll find out that most of the time it's negative. It's in a negative light. And the most of the dancing people do today is, is wicked. And the dancing in this game is wicked. Uh, if you're dancing, doing a victory dance after you kill someone in a game, that's wrong. You can also buy weapons in the game. You can buy axes. And although the game doesn't have blood and gore, 
and it's a cartoonish looking. The idea of going around and hitting people with axes for 8 to 14 hours a day, which most people spend that much time on the game, that's going to make you desensitized to violence. The Bible says in Romans 7, 13, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. The Bible makes sin appear sinful to you. If you quit with these games, quit with these movies, and just read the Bible, you're going to see sin as what it is. You're going to see it as sinful. But video games make sin seem less and less sinful the more you play them. And next I want to talk about the violence in Fortnite. And here's a quote from a young player who's under the age of 18. He says about the game, it's very sketchy and violent. He says, I have played Fortnite and people shoot each other with war and assault weapons and bludgeon each other with pickaxes. You hear cr cracking noises when you hit someone with a pickaxe. And if you really think about it, it seems like genocide. In online chat, people use words like the F word and the N word. And one of my friends ditched me to play Fortnite. A young kid said this about the game. And it's sad that a young kid has more sense about a game than parents do. Is it good for you to hear your 10-year-old walking around the house saying, I got so many kills in that game of Fortnite? Or did you see me get that headshot on that guy? In 2019, violence is definitely a huge problem. We have more shootings going on than ever. And whether or not those things are real or false flags, whichever one you believe, you still have to admit there is still an insane amounts of violence going on today that is real, that's not talked about in the news. But there's real violence going on today, and these video games are a big cause of that. In the Fortnite game, a hundred players are on an island, and the objective is to kill one another. It is fight or flight. You are either running from being killed, or you're trying to kill each other constantly. So you just keep a non-stop adrenaline rush. So what's going to happen when you're not playing the game? Everything's going to be boring. You're going to open up the Bible, and you're going to see black letters on white pages. And that's going to bore you to death because you're used to a non-stop adrenaline rush. And obviously, the game's not real. I hate it when people say, well, it's not real. Well, uh, duh, we know the game's not real. We know it's just a game. But what did the, what does games like this do to the mind of a person? In Noah's day, God said about the world, he said, in Genesis 6, 11, the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. The Fortnite game is nothing but a world full of violence and killing. Men and young men can't grow up because they aren't taught to put away childish things. 1 Corinthians 13, 11 says, When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. And you have fathers today who will spend more time playing Fortnite than they do spending time with their own wife and kids. We're living in a time when the world is pumping your, your boy's mind full of violence through video games and sex perversion through pornography. And those two things are a wicked combination. And every video game creator and porn movie director is going to be held accountable, accountable to God for every murder rape that's taken place. Because you can't tell me violent video games mixed with hardcore pornography isn't making a world of sexual deviates that's going to do a bunch of wicked John Wayne Gacy stuff. Uh, the Lord is angry with the wicked every day. Psalms 11, 5 says, The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked in him that loveth violence his soul hateth. And another argument you'll hear from people is, uh, Well, my kid has enough sense to know he's not supposed to go out and shoot somebody. And maybe your kid will never go out and shoot somebody. But the game's still a sin whether or not he goes through with killing somebody or not. I mean, he's sitting playing a game that involves actual sin in the game. He's simulating murder on the game. Violence outside of the command of God is of the devil. God told men to kill others in the Old Testament. But this had to do with men worshipping false gods and being an abomination to God. So God commanded of the killing of those men and the women and children in the Old Testament. 
But this is because those same children would have grown up and been just like their fathers, bloody and deceitful men. When God commanded the killing in the Old Testament, it was righteous. He's a righteous judge. And just because your ways aren't his ways doesn't mean your way is the right way. And just because there's killing in the Old Testament doesn't justify playing a game that has unrighteous killing in it. Killing for no reason. That was an argument a pastor of a church used against me going against this game the other day. He said, there's all kinds of killing in the Old Testament, but and you read that, so why can't you play a game like this? That's stupidity. Has he even read the Bible? Uh, God doesn't work this way today. Uh, God isn't commanding us to kill anyone today. God's people aren't to use violence. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We use the word of God to fight our battles. Fortnite is of the devil because of the unrighteous violence. You can't compare violence in a video game, sinful violence in a video game, to the violence that took place in the Old Testament that God commanded. That doesn't make sense. At the second coming of Christ, the wicked men left on earth are going to be killed. The violent man, the bloody and deceitful men. Micah 6, 12 and 13 says, For the rich men thereof are full of violence, and the inhabitants thereof have spoken lies, and their tongue is deceitful in their mouth. Therefore also will I make thee sick in smiting thee, and making thee desolate because of thy sins. So in the tribulation time period, the Bible talks about how iniquity Iniquity shall abound, and the love of many shall wax cold. In Matthew 24, Jesus speaks of this concerning the worst time the world has ever seen. And what you're going to have is, what you're going to have in that time is bloody, violent, deceitful men who have been raised up on porn and violent video games, seen millions of deaths on movies. You have kids right now addicting themselves to hardcore porn and violent video games like Fortnite where you shoot and murder your opponent. That's who's going to be in the Great Tribulation. The love of many is going to wax cold. It's not going to be safe to walk down the street. It's going to be a real-life purge. And I was very, very shocked by the parental reviews of the game. But after all, these parents grew up playing violent video games themselves, and they say the game is okay because there isn't any blood and gore, and the violence is so cartoonish. And even if there isn't any blood and gore, the entire concept of the game is out of hell. The main obje objective is kill everyone you see, even though everyone you see is trying to stay alive. Shooting people with guns and killing them with axes isn't okay, even if it's a cartoon. Is Family Guy okay? Is American Dad okay? The Simpsons and Beavis and Butthead? Those are cartoons. They're not okay. They got bad stuff in them. Only a warped generation of parents would think this is okay. Imagine how wicked these Fortnite gamers will be when they become parents. Anything's okay. Another parent says about Fortnite, Simulated killing is just not okay for kids. If you are a Christian and letting your child play this, you are sending a very mixed message. Because the two... Do not go together. Even if it's cartoony, it's sexualized and shooting people. Killing for play is not okay. Not okay for my 6-year-old, my 8-year-old, or 15-year-old. And if your kid is playing it, I don't want my kids hanging with yours. Finally, a smart parent says it right. And the next thing I want to talk about is the rage caused by Fortnite shows that it's a wicked game. One regular Fortnite gamer said this about his raging when he plays the game. He says, I commonly find myself raging a lot on Fortnite, and when I do so, I commonly do certain things to take out my anger. My tendencies include punching my thigh till it is bruised, strongly biting my thigh, or biting my hand. And I know those are weird ways to take out my anger at the game, but I, w but I wonder what other people do when they rage. So he's biting himself and inflicting pain on himself. That's just like the devil-possessed man in the Gospels. He was crying and cutting himself with stones. The prophets of Baal in the Old Testament that was up against Elijah, they were cutting themselves. That shows demonic influence when you're hurting yourself. 
And a lot of these gamers, they get in such a rage when they lose on a game, they'll start beating themselves in the head with the controller. One parent of a Fortnite gamer said this, seemingly okay until the addiction sets in. What seemingly seems okay to start will end up tearing your family apart. This game has turned my child into an angry person who has become highly addicted to this game. And there is probably some type of subliminal messaging happening, turning 125 million people into crazy, addictive, mean people. Just thought it was a collaborative game when I'm finding out that it's created a monster. Have you seen your son, or I'm so sorry to say your husband, playing Fortnite? Have you seen the rage in his face when he gets killed? Have you seen the rage on him when he loses? Have you seen the broken video game controllers? Have you heard him cuss and use profanity over the headset as he cusses out an eight-year-old across the country who just got a headshot on him? Uh, the sin of Sodom was pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness, as it says in Ezekiel 16.49. In Sodom they were sexually perverted. And I worry about a man who defrauds his wife because he wants to play video games all night. If you would rather play a game with a bunch of other men all night long, if you'd rather do that than spending time, some alone time with your wife, I would be worried about your abundance of idleness that you have. I'd be worried you're going in the same direction as the sodomite. Uh, keep sitting around and eating Cheetos and playing Fortnite and watching porn and see where that gets you. That leads to being a sex perverted sodomite. But have you seen the rage the game causes? Have you experienced that in your own home where you see your kid throwing his controller, putting a hole in the wall, punching himself upside the head because he just lost? This game is not just this game, but a good majority of the games have wicked spirits connected to them. Colossians 3.8 says, But now... Ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. That's a rough verse for a good number of Fortnite players because they're full of anger, they're full of wrath, they're full of malice. They blaspheme God with the stuff they say on their headsets. It's nothing for them to lose a game and take the precious name of the Lord in vain. It's nothing for a grown man who's actually just a baby on these games to have filthy communication come out of his mouth that an eight-year-old boy can hear in a different state because of the headsets that they use on the game when you play online. Ephesians 4.31 says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. That's hard to do with your Fortnite addiction. It teaches wrath. It teaches anger. It teaches clamor and evil speaking. It teaches malice. But next, I want to talk about Fortnite is wicked because of the addiction itself. I feel sorry for this young girl who, who wrote this review. She said this, This game is super addictive. I have started Fortnite before school. I can't control myself anymore. It's like some sort of drug. Every time I get back from school, I play this game. It has come to a level where my parents are worried about me. I don't know what I'm going to do. And how sad that is. Can you imagine a game so addictive that even this teenage girl realizes how wicked it is? She wants to stop and can't stop. And we're not talking about drugs or sex or alcohol. We're talking about a video game. It's okay to be addicted to the things of God. The Bible talks about those who are addicted to the ministry. But when you let yourself get addicted to things in this sinful world, you're letting the devil ruin you. 1 Corinthians 6.12 says, All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. So Paul says, I will not be brought under the power of any. But when you let a game control you, you're not following what, what the verse said. A parent of a Fortnite player said this. He said, he used to be a good and kind person. Now he's addicted, obsessed, enraged, and lashing out at us and his little sister and brother when we force him to get off the game. And he must be forced. Democratic decisions made with him to manage his time better are mocked by him. He tells us he hates us wants to kill himself. He pleads for more time like a crack addict. He goes through withdrawals for about 24 hours if we take it away. He's angry, withdrawn, always negotiating for more, more and more time. And this is only after a month. We agreed to let him use this game based on the rating from CSM. 
and how it has fractured our relationship with our child. We are disappointed in CSM and feel it failed us. Now we have to figure out how to fix this. He has already decided it is mom versus Fortnite. And so his young brain can't process that this is for his own good. Addiction is wrong. And when you're playing a game that's so easily addicted, you're sinning against God. Next, Fortnite is a bad addiction because of who you interact with. A simple Google search about Fortnite said this, Fortnite is an online shooter that starts with 100 players and leaves one winner standing. The entire point of the game is to kill other players, but the violence is cartoon-like. Although the game itself seems pretty harmless, players can talk and type whatever they want to each other, and bad language is rampant. 1 Corinthians 15.33 says, Be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. Isn't it a bit creepy that your 9-year-old kid can get on a video game and play with a 40-year-old in another state? Isn't it creepy that your son or daughter could talk through a sodomite, a pedophile, or any other sex pervert through a headset in his own bedroom? Kids are being taught the most abominable stuff because of all our advances in communication. They're talking to God knows. Only God knows who they're talking to on those video games. You can put on that headset and talk to anybody playing the game. The parents are asleep. The kids are staying up all night talking to God only knows who they're talking to. There are 40-year-old babies cussing at your kid on a video game. That's just weird. And they're even talking about how pedophiles are giving the kids money in the game. To buy more skins and emotes and weapons. They're giving them money in exchange for naked pictures. Then they're using the naked pictures as blackmail to get more naked pictures. You don't know who your kid's talking to. You don't know the stuff that they're learning from kids that's older than them that they're playing with. They're learning more cuss words they didn't know. More dirty jokes they didn't know. They're learning about all kinds of wicked stuff while they're going around in these demonic looking skins and characters and hitting people with axes and shooting people. An another uh, preacher mocked me for going against this game. He even said, w when he saw me going against it, he said, well, I was looking for this game at a discounted price somewhere. Do you know a good place where I could get it at a discounted price? So he's mocking what I'm saying. I tell you, we're living in a bad time when even professed Christians and preachers don't even see sin for what it is. And I hope, surely, maybe you don't agree with all my points in this study, but surely you found one thing that tells you and shows you that this game is sinful and that you shouldn't play it.